Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Shah Fahad Khan on your screen. Now guys, today there is a very big announcement that I want to make and that is I'm going to start out a series of lectures on AS chemistry complete syllabus revision in this series of lectures and it's more going to it's going to be more like a workshop of AS chemistry covering all the high yield points all the major points that you guys as AS students must know before attempting the exam regardless of how much the exam uh, preparation you've done all right and this is especially important if you guys are preparing for your exams and if you want to review it you can review it like a week before the exam or sorry not a week like a month before the exam okay the entire course would be uh, the entire course would be reviewed okay so let's get started now <clears throat> So basically the chapter that I'm going to start out today is a chapter of uh, the very first chapter basically and uh, it's related to atomic structure and inorganic not actually inorganic chemistry but rather the at atomic structure and the name of the topic is ionization energy okay. So this is the topic that we are going to do at ionization energy alright so let's begin. <coughs> Ionization energy. So first of all, we must know what's the definition of ionization energy. Ionization energy by definition is basically the energy which we need to remove one mole. This is the key term one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms. This is the second key term to produce one mole of univalent again one mole of univalent positively charged ions okay this is the complete definition of ionization energy all right now let me explain what that actually means so in order to explain you must look at this example over here so basically this what this definition is trying to tell you is that the it's basically ionization energy as the name suggests energy it is a form of energy okay and what sort of energy well it's the sort of energy that we provide to gaseous atoms okay now over here i've got magnesium atoms in the gaseous state and one mole of magnesium magnesium atoms are used okay this is just one mole of magnesium now one mole of magnesium we provide energy to the that mole of magnesium and what that energy does is it it uh, it accelerates the electrons or it it excites the electrons and the electron one electron one mole of electrons in this magnesium atom they uh, absorb the energy and that energy is high enough for that electron to leave this magnesium atom and go away leaving behind magnesium ion okay and why is an ion formed because it has lost one electron a negatively charged uh, species is lost right a negative species is lost a minus one charge is lost so it will gain a plus one charge right because the protons have exceeded the electrons now so now look again and this time this definition is going to be crystal clear and it will be it will be in your heads now the energy that we provide to one mole of gaseous atoms to produce one mole of univalent positively charged ions why univalent univalent what does univalent term means this this term univalent uni means one right unit uni uni same thing and valent means valency the charge on it so the the charge so univalent means plus one charge it's positive and it's univalent meaning having a charge of plus one okay this plus one is a charge is it the charge on magnesium yes it is so that's the charge on magnesium forming one mole of univalent positively charged ions okay removing one mole of electron forming one mole of univalent positively charged ions so now to sum it up ionization energy is the energy that we provide to an atom to remove one mole of electron from it forming one mole of positively charged ions okay and now if i provide further energy to this gaseous ions to this univalent positively charged ions if i provide more energy and if i remove another electron from it another mole of electron from it then i'll get a, a divalent charge a divalent ion basically a positively charged divalent ion now this time since the charge has become plus two this energy that I provided will be called second ionization energy okay 
and another electron has been removed if i were to show it to you in a di diagrammatic form so you guys know what an atom looks like right this is the nucleus of an atom and these are the electron shells the principal quantum shells around it now there are two electrons in the first shell and let's assume there is one electron in the third shell uh, sorry in the second shell and this this these are all the electrons it has so can you guess what element this is this is lithium right it has three electrons now if this is lithium this is the outermost electron remember this ionization energy is absorbed by the electron that would require least energy to escape okay i'm repeating the ionization energy is provided to the electron that will require the least energy to escape meaning the electron that's <coughs> Since you guys know electrons are negative and the nucleus is positive, so there is an electrostatic force of attraction between them, right? The electron that is far apart, that is the farthest apart from the nucleus will be most weakly attracted to the nucleus, right? And the one which is closest to the nucleus will be the strongest, strong, the strongest attraction will exist between that electron and the nucleus. Now, since this electron is the outermost electron, it will require less energy. So that ionization energy will rapidly or immediately be absorbed by the outermost electron. So now, in this way, the energy that I provide to this outermost electron to escape, okay? The energy I provide to this outermost electron, this electron will gain energy and it will use that energy to overcome this force of attraction and it will escape out this energy will be called the first ionization energy okay and you will get an ion okay this is the nucleus and this time now it will only have two electrons left with a positive charge because it has lost one electron okay and this is your electron and this ion is univalent and is positively charged okay and so now this time this energy is called the first ionization energy first ie clear now a few characteristics or a few properties or a few important points that you must note regarding ionization energy it is always endothermic endothermic means it will always absorb energy okay in, in simple terms or you if you want to see the definition of endothermic endothermic means that the energy absorbed in bond breaking is greater than the energy released in bond forming that's another definition that you guys might have learned in your o levels but endo endo means absorbing or or taking in so undergone undergonic is a synonym for endothermic reactions okay undergonic it's also called endergonic now it's always exothermic uh, sorry it's always endothermic the first ionization energy is always endothermic because it it uses energy to break the bond okay to break the bond between this this attraction to break this attraction we require energy right to break this attraction between the electron and the nucleus energy is required so in order to break this we require energy so that's why energy needs to be absorbed by that atom by that electron so that it could escape this therefore since we need energy to break this attraction so therefore this ionization energy also gives you an idea of how strongly this outermost electron is bounded to the nucleus okay as i explained it right over here so the greater the ionization energy the more difficult it is to remove the outermost electron that's it in this lecture guys in the next lecture we'll be talking about the trends of the first ionization energy in the periodic table thank you